buying convertible plane. Okay, I got you one. Needle with Sunder coming. I guess he's warming up. So he started off exactly where you were saying. Yeah, I'm saying 21 five. He had a clean trade of uh, 21 nine. So a good trade. Yeah. Miles ain't gonna buy. 23 two. Jesse, I let it go. Let it go. You're a thousand dollars over a clean trade. All right. Yeah, retail 24. And you're two grand over. Black book for Bulls money. God bless him. I'll let that one go. All right, so as you can see, they're uh, they're bidding on cars right now. Just bought a uh, what was that? A Passat? Yeah, that was a Jetta. That was a Jetta, white Jetta, good looking car. But uh, as you can see, it's moving fast. You got auctioneer going through, and the cars are popping up, throwing the pictures in there, the vehicles, you know, exterior, interior, and all the specs and uh, and pricing. So that one is we're on eleven two. Nobody bid it on it. So uh, boom, we got it. Good morning, it's the vlog right here with Stokes Volkswagen. So uh, the dealership ordered just a few days ago six beautiful pre-owned Volkswagens and they're certified pre-owned Volkswagens. And what I'm doing early this morning on this cold March day in South Carolina is I'm hauling tail to the Volkswagen store to film the 18-wheeler pulling in with these Volkswagen. You can only imagine with weather climates the way they are this year, sleet, snow, rain, whatever weather climates there are, these Volkswagens gotta be safe on this 18-wheeler. Let's get out in just a second and take a look. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's down in the 40s today. Just last week in South Carolina, it was in the 80 degree range. Today, in the upper 40s, it's cold. What's up, Marcelo? How you doing? Good, man. Marcelo, tell us, um, uh, you know, all right, you've been, you, how long you been transporting vehicles now? Uh, seven years, almost eight in this moment. And uh, when you transport vehicles, uh, is there a process to keep the vehicle safe while you're traveling? Absolutely. We have to regulate them by the DOT. We have to tie them up, measuring the height of the trailer, including the cars and obviously uh, protect the cars of the, any inconvenience that we can normally, uh, we have like bad weather, sand in the road, mm -hmm. or even raining, heavy raining days. Things like that. Okay, so it's important to keep those vehicles safe on the back of the truck. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Have you ever had any stories of uh, something that's ever happened that's out of the ordinary? Uh, it, well, it happens every day. We drive in cars, uh, we drive in 18 wheelers, uh, almost 80,000 pound trucks. Um, you know, and the road people, sometimes when in this moment, like you put it in the turn signals to make a turn, the people don't respect that. Right. But uh, we have to deal with that every single day. So. Yes, yeah, so you get used to it. <laughs> About that, we have to keep normal days. Now, how, how many Volkswagens do you have to drop off here today? Uh, six. Six Volkswagens. Yes, sir. All right, folks, let's head on down to the store. All right. All right. Thank you, Marcelo. You're welcome.
All right, so uh, Marcel, as you just saw, seven years driving the truck. Yeah, he's got six VWs a day, certified pre-owned. Let's do this. And uh, let's make sure I don't <laughs> just fall out at the bottom here, right? <laughs> Man. Do we love our Volkswagen at Stokes Volkswagen? Oh yeah, we do. Basically lower down and get these Volkswagens off safely for the dealership to be able to sell in the near future. All right, let's go inside and meet the guy that actually inspects all the vehicles here at Stokes Volkswagen. His name is Thomas Beard, and he handles this process just after the truck driver pulls the vehicles on the lot. They gotta get inspection before that truck driver leaves to go to his next location. I think the last one that I pick him up in Palm Beach. Okay. And probably I have to take a look inside each one because in someone I put it in three cars and one little lady. All right. But at each location, I make a sign from the manager in that location. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right, no hey everyone, I'm Thomas Beard. Some of the first things we do when the uh, vehicles are dropped off, uh, I'll, I'll go around and do a quick inspection and ensure everything is just as it says on the inspection report when we purchase the vehicle, also, whenever or it's the same on the bill of lading um, and I'll also make sure we don't have any flats the treads good on the tires uh, and as you can tell <clears throat> or as you know CPOs have to have all four same brands so I check that and compare it with the condition report because that is a common mistake on the condition report all four tires have to be the same brand okay is there a, do you have to check the densing scratches? Yes, the uh, ding cannot be bigger than a size of a quarter, and scratches can't be deeper than the surface. The most common ones are rocker panel damage uh -huh. up under here. Um, it's hard to see it from out here. Yeah, and then you'll also get damage up under here. Okay, and that gets seen though when you get in the shop sometimes. Yeah, and put up on the lift. And by that time, the truck was already gone sometimes? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's when your arbitration process comes. Um, when purchased through Mannheim or VW Direct, anything uh -huh. like that. Has that happened before? Uh, several occasions. Okay. Now, when you have to deal with the arbitration <laughs> office, I mean, what well, basically what? What the, who has to pay for that? Um, usually, it's Volkswagen Credit. Uh, or <clears throat> that because they're the ones putting the vehicles on sale, and they're the ones who are in charge. Making sure the condition reports. Well, most of our vehicles we get from VW Direct because they're all fleece vehicles, things like that. Okay. Usually you can get them in much better shape, and they're usually a lot easier to deal with than, mm -hmm. say, purchasing it at Mannheim Auction. Uh, anytime I've ever had to do an arbitration with VW Direct, everything's went smooth. I haven't had any issues. Um, but at the same time, I don't take little things to them or things that I shouldn't. I don't. I don't arbitrate. Is there anything on the interior that you have to look for at all, or? Uh, I mean, most of the interior stuff, pretty easy. I mean, you want to obviously check and make sure all your headrests are there. Yeah. Uh, with us, not all. You're only supposed to put mats in there for CPOs if it came with it at the original purchase when it was new. However, we have a blanket rule just to keep from any confusion. We make sure everything has mats. I'll check and make sure it has everything uh, that it came with at the original point of sale. Uh, obviously, I can't tell exactly, but <clears throat> from being in the business, I can tell 
for the most part. Like if it like, doesn't have a spare tire, I obviously know it's supposed to come with a spare tire. And the, and the tools. Mm -hmm. A bill of lading. Bill of lading? Mm -hmm. Okay. Chad, well, I just uh, found something here. If uh, even something as little as this right here, we have to remove before it can be certified. Uh, it's obviously nothing big. It's probably not even on there real good but it was did not come with this vehicle in the back yep okay. Gotta be in there. Uh, if it's ever been tuned or anything like that you can't certify the vehicle no uh, turbo upgrades no no nothing like that lowering springs coilovers anything like that uh, it, everything has to be back to stock before it can be certified and if it's been flashed it can never be certified Marcelo, once uh, once you get all the tr all the cars off the truck, what's the next step for you? Uh, verify all the inspection, the bill of lading, uh, make a sign the um, inspection from the manager, and we've done this. And then boom, 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 up on the road. Yes, sir. There you go. Here's a little fun fact: every vehicle that's uh, able to be a certified pre-owned car has to be within the last six years of the model and under 75,000 miles. So just about all these vehicles that we have in the row here today are probably cars that are off lease. Maybe they were a company car or something like that. That's why they're usually a little bit lower mileage vehicles. So that's uh, good information to know. So Thomas also verifies that he has each and every key. Now should there be two sets of keys? Is that how that works? Two sets of keys. So in this particular situation today, folks, we should have 12 keys in total. All right, Thomas, explain what we're doing now. All right, so my next step after doing the inspections, getting inside, um, I will first, I've already taken pictures of the vehicles. Um, those will be uploaded later on today even while they're going through the shop uh, we'll have prices and everything up uh, that way we already have exposure um, we'll get these vehicles moved and turned a lot quicker um, as soon as I get them I'll start writing them up I'll get these stickers in them uh, identified with stock numbers obviously uh, we have green tags for all certified units or to be certified units um, those that's how we identify by those uh, so, so yeah gr green is the tag color for a CPO car correct okay. it's, uh, it helps us identify them and that way when uh, one of our salespeople see the green tags they know for a fact it is a certified vehicle on top of all the advertisement we have located on the vehicle mm -hmm. uh, with stickers and everything and then as soon as they have the paperwork done and everything sold I have our CPO inventory all right here and packets uh, they're a little low now uh, with inside of deal jackets with the spare key all the paperwork, inspection checklist, RO, uh, proof of certification, and CPO warranty manual, and the Carfax. All right, good. All right, now what do you do um, on this side here? All right, so I already have all these vehicles pre-stocked in to really help us move this process along a little bit quicker. I've already searched up this particular vehicle here. This is a, a like new certified unit. Well, will be certified unit. Um, so now I'm going to run the Elsa Pro on the vehicle. And uh, uh, Thomas, what is the Elsa Pro? So that will show all of its service history, the vehicle data on the vehicle, if it has any recalls or campaigns. Uh, and what all has been, uh, anything we need to know on the service side of the vehicle. Okay. So for this particular vehicle, it's a under 10,000 miles. Matter of fact, I think it has 7,000. Mm -hmm. um, 7,400, miles. So it actually doesn't have any service history. It's a newer vehicle, so it doesn't have any campaigns. 
Um, so all we're going to print out here is the vehicle data, which will be stapled to our certified inspection checklist here uh, and given to our service department. Uh, that way they have any information that they need. They have the ability to pull this as well. It just uh, makes the process go a little bit smoother since I have to get the information from there anyway. Hey Tom, you got two cars coming in too, by the way. I got more coming in? Two, two more. You just, you just pulled one up. I told them to pull them behind the ones that were lined up on the other side. All right, thank you. I'll be out there in just a second. All right, so actually while I'm trying to write up my first vehicle from the last batch of cars, I've already got uh, another truck pulling up to drop off some more. Uh, it's going to be a long day. Everybody. We're in service right now at Stokes Volkswagen. Now, as you just saw, you saw Thomas do everything he had to do with the truck driver out there, inspected the vehicle, and then Thomas went in his office, wrote the tag names up for the vehicles, put those little tags on there. He takes the keys up to the key track system so they can be programmed into the system with the car and the tag all lined up. After Thomas is done with everything he's done, now the service advisor's part comes into play with a CPO vehicle. He will get a RO, which stands for a repair order. He'll get this printed up and go ahead and assign a technician in the shop to do the CPO inspection on the vehicle. All right, hey, how you doing? I'm Ted. We're here at Stokes Volkswagen. We're gonna walk you through our CPO process. We've got a 2016 Jetta. Got 7,000 miles on it. We're gonna check it out and get it ready for the customer. We're gonna right. do a quick walk around the car, make sure there's no damage. While I'm here, I'm just gonna make sure all the alarm features work. Trunk works. Panic button works. Lock it up and it beeps. Tires look good, no damage. Let's go ahead and go for a ride. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna check the mileage on the repair order. And we do have an accurate mileage. We'll let the vehicle started and running. We're going to let it idle. Make sure we don't have any check engine lights on or any other safety lights. Airbag, traction control. Looks good. In a little bit of a tight spot. Utilize the full steering here. So one of the things, we're going to get our mirrors set here, check their mileage, make sure we don't have any malfunction indicators on, letting the engine warm up a little bit before we take off on the road. One of the important points of doing a CPO with a cold vehicle is so that we can verify that there are no cold drivability problems and also so that we can check cold engine performance. When we take our vehicle on a seven mile test loop, it varies with stop and go traffic. Also has about a 55 mile an hour top speed limit on the main stretch which gives us a chance to check tire balance and any vibrations or odd noises it's not just a typical two mile back and forth from the dealership down the street so it gives us an opportunity to fully check out all the features of the vehicle on the roadway I'm gonna hit the wipers while we're at it here And it's a low mileage vehicle, but they got some streaking, so we're definitely gonna wanna replace those for the customer. Don't wanna have any minor details like that take away from our product. Engine's still cold, so cruising along, moderate throttle, being the speed limit, of course. Nice thing about the stop and go area on the test drive here is you can let the vehicle coast down, gives you a chance to listen for any interior noises. Nice quality, quiet cabin here. Another benefit of a long test drive is you got varying road surfaces, allows you to hear for tire noises. And then the 
course, the varying speeds, different features of the vehicle, different functions of driveline, different resonances and frequencies. So it's good to have that long test drive. I'm going to pull this over and get rid of our flapping noise because that'll, that'll probably kill your audio, man. Well, you know, that's a good point but, uh, about the uh, flapping noise because I was driving a CPO one down the road a minute ago when it's already been through the shop. Right. And the sticker up here was flapping. It was so time, yeah. man. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, Ted's actually getting that sticker off there because like I mentioned earlier in the video, that flapping sound, for at least on the sales guys, if y'all are out test driving with your customers, that can be uh, distracting and uh, it can make people uncomfortable even test driving a car for the first time, having to listen to that sound the whole time. One thing's for certain, we don't want anything to take away from the vehicle and the presentation of the vehicle, especially seeing as we're trying to sell it. That's right. Something like a sticker can kill a sale and give a customer an unwelcome feeling about the brand, about the vehicle, about our store, and that would not help us out. We want you to buy a certified pre-owned, but we also have uh, other makes and models in our inventory to fit all your needs. And that's what it's really about in the sales department is finding the customer's needs, filling them, and win-win, everybody's happy, and it's the way to do business. Back to the question, um, mm -hmm. you know, we are representing a brand, but we want to represent the brand in a way that we're loyal to the brand and we thoroughly inspect the vehicle because the brand's Volkswagen's putting a warranty on this vehicle that's an extension over the existing warranty. So we want to do them the service of appropriately inspecting the vehicle so that if there are any defects that they're not responsible for, we can take care of those before the warranty's applied. And then the same goes for the customer as well. We don't want to give them a vehicle that hasn't been appropriately inspected and could possibly be unsafe or you know, incur extra expenses later on. Mm -hmm. Just coming to a gradual stop here. Brakes feel good. No brake noises. Car's warmed up a little bit. It's kind of chilly, but I'm going to go ahead and check the AC while we're driving. Have to make sure that all the features work. Direct ventilation, footwell, defrost, combination of all. Coming down a stretch of road here that's two lanes. Generally speaking, not a lot of traffic. This is where I like to test my brakes to make sure we don't have any warped rotors or odd noises under a little bit of heavier braking so we don't have any traffic around. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on pretty good. Car's not pulling any one direction. No odd noises. I like to make two or three passes at about that rate. Put some heat into the brakings. Make sure we don't have any vibrations or odd noises. Not a bad time to check the acceleration. That's about all we got for the speed limit here. For one good stop. Feels good, feels good. Got great brakes on these vehicles for sure. Go ahead and work the functions. We're gonna decelerate. Operation's good there. Accelerate back up. Always wanna check the cancel function. It does work and then that allows me to check the resume function. back into drive. I'm actually going to shift it into sport mode. Another feature. Holds the gears a little bit longer. Give you a little more acceleration without the transmission having to downshift two gears at a time. Coming back to our destination here. We didn't hit a stoplight so we're going to cruise up here a ways where it's safe to stop. And go ahead and Make sure that that Tiptronic works from first. First gear. And 
as anticipated, no problems with that. To so the dealership here, crack our windows open. All our climate control features work nice. And again, it's a little bit of a chilly day. I had to let some of that heat out. I'm gonna turn my heated seat off. I think that's probably some of your warmth as well. And the functions with the heated seats work nice. Buttons have a good feel, no sticky soda. Those windows rolled back up. Let's go ahead and check the ventilation without the AC, without the recirc. Just put it in the middle of the temperature zone there. Get her pulled into the shop and start checking all our windows and doors individually. Make sure our spare tire is there, inflated to the appropriate pressure. Make sure our tool kit's installed. And we'll also do a visual inspection on all the lights front and rear. One of the great features of these cars in this generation is that we have bulb indicators to let us know when we have bulbs in and out. And I rely on those, but once I bring it back into the shop, I go ahead and perform that visual inspection on them to make sure that there are no problems with that system prior to scanning the vehicle. The other nice thing about performing the test drive is getting the fluids up to temperature because we like to do an oil change on all our certified pre-owned vehicles and that ensures that we have a nice good oil run out of the engine and we can get all the fresh oil in there that we need. I'm also going to operate the trunk while I'm here just using all the driver aids. And it's a good time to check the parking brake. I like to put it in gear, the parking brake engage, make sure the vehicle doesn't take off on us. And just got a good feel to it. While we're in the shop on a cold day, you can check your heated mirrors and rear defrost with all the condensation and cold weather on the glass. But if you don't have that, you can just go ahead and turn them on and give them a moment or two and check them out. Make sure that the glass all feels warm to the touch. All right, so go ahead and check the glass. Definitely warm to the touch. I'm gonna switch it off. Don't like to run those too long. Check the rear glass, warm to the touch. Popped our trunk, that feature is operating as it's intended. Lock and unlock's operating, wire here. It's a good time to check the seat. Fore and aft. Rear tilt. Seat base, rises and falls, seat belt buckles, height adjusters nice and smooth. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing with the rear, open, open, run that window up, one touch up window is very nice. While I'm in the car, I like to go ahead and open up this one and save myself some time. Interior works, one touch works, check my rear seat belts, well looks like we're missing one of our buckles, see little things like that upset a customer. Take care of this real quick. Doesn't matter why it was like that, it only matters if the customer finds it like that after we inspected the vehicle. Check the center seat belt, latches and release, retracts, armrest, cup holder, no damage. Got our pass through feature for you golfers. Check the last seat belt here. Nice and smooth. And then check our headrests. Make sure they're all operational. And the same thing, since I'm in here, I'm gonna do the drivers. I'm gonna check the height adjuster on that belt. I was wearing that belt on the test drive, so I know it works. Headrests on the passenger here. I like to do everything in a process. I'm right here at the fuel door. Make sure our open close function works. Now I'm back here at the rear. Can unlatch the seat back. 
reach right in that open window, make sure that function works. Same thing on this side, right through that open window, function works. Already checked the interior in the window, it's that exterior handle. Let's make sure we got a toolkit in here, we do. It's like the guy at the PDI didn't put the information label into the owner's manual, so we're gonna take care of that. There's our front plate and the hardware. We'll leave that out. Tire feels a little low. Definitely gonna pull that out of there and make sure it's got the correct inflation in it. Set that off to the side. Use our strap. Another feature is once the vehicle's unlocked, the trunk works from the exterior handle. Tag lights are good. Tail lights are good. Have you check my brake lights while you're back there. How we look? Excellent. Last thing we didn't check was the sunroof for the interior features. We'll go ahead and check that out right now. Got our sunglass holder, works good. Everybody looks good. Get ready to pop our hood. All right, we move the vehicle up so we can set it on the lift. Got our hood open, nice and smooth, prop rod works. All right. Just doing a visual inspection under the hood here. Make sure we don't have any damage. Down here in the warm weather, we get a lot of critters that like to make homes. Make sure all our covers are in place, engine covers, battery covers. Gonna need to put some wash fluid in here. Coolant level looks good. The vehicle started off hot. Or excuse me, since the vehicle is up to temperature, should I say? It's in between the min and the max. Brake fluid level looks good. And down between the engine and transmission. I don't see any oil leaks from either components. Pop our cover off. Everything looks in order. What are you actually uh, looking for right now? Just right? checking all your wiring, make sure everything's bolted down. Mm -hmm. So pressure regulating valve right here can have oil leaks from this area it's a high fuel pressure pump mm -hmm. can have fuel leaks just doing an all-around visual inspection again one of the biggest things down here is you get the critters man they like to eat everything <laughs> yeah. take a look at our serpentine belt drive don't see any damage or irregular wear or cracking looking at ac lines for any type of refrigerant oil leaking got a loose clip right here it's a perfect example of a minor detail, it could turn into a problem. The compressor could cycle on and off. This line can vibrate, create a noise inside the passenger compartment. Mm -hmm. That happens out on a test drive, it could turn a customer off from our brand, from our vehicle. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take care of that. Seems pretty secure. It's possible somebody worked in that area. It's possible it came loose on its own. Seems pretty secure. All right, let's set the lift. All right, all clear here. One more quick visual inspection. Make sure the vehicle's stable on the lift. Now, one thing we're gonna need to do, Chad, is we've got our oil filter here, and our oil cap still installed, so we're gonna need to start that process for the oil change. One thing, crack this oil filter open and take it right off, you'll make a mess everywhere. So, I like to spin it loose. And let it start to drain on its own. Get our oil cap off. Put it right here. That way, if anyone has to come to this vehicle, they know before they close the hood that there's not an oil cap on it and there may be a problem. All our warning labels are in place. Let's 
let that drain out for the time being. All right, let's put it in the air. Shaping up to be a real nice CPO. Looks like a little bit of road tar or something, nothing our detail department can't handle. Put it all the way up. In process of time, I'd like to go ahead and get that oil draining. So let's do that. Like I said, let's get the oil draining while we're doing our visual inspection on the rest of the underbody of the vehicle. You guys that are new to these engines, watch out. I like to shoot the oil out of that pan. Make a mess everywhere. Now, can you tell us a little bit, is it, does the color of the oil mean anything? Well, generally speaking, the darker the oil, the more used it is. Uh, you know, I still have some old timers come in from time to time. They want to know how the oil looks, and I like to tell them the same thing. It looked used. Um, try not to judge anything by appearance these days, and the quality of oils, especially our factory synthetic oils, is far exceeds anything of the past, even the past 10 years. So. It seemed like it got darker as it started getting here. Absolutely, that okay. fan thinned out so you can't see through it. Um, yeah. In general terms, it looks like 7,000 mile oil. Okay. Definitely doesn't look like 17,000 mile oil. Yeah. And just judging from the amount of engine oil that came out of it, it looks like the level was within the correct range. That was one of the things with these vehicles, you definitely want to check that oil every thousand miles or if you have any other conditions that may be occurring even sooner possibly 500. Uh, right off the bat here you can see we got some damage to this body pan uh, that's not warranty that's outside influence so the dealership's going to have to buy that so that we can make this vehicle right for the customer. I'm going to remove that belly pan so just that little rip right there yeah. Yes, sir. If it was a uh, defect in the component itself, then that would be covered under warranty, but that piece is damaged. Most likely a piece of road debris. Vehicles that have high mileage on them and different configurations of this sound baffle, you'll get shops aftermarket cut holes in them intentionally. So we'll just set that off to the side for the time being. Chad, there's a checklist. I've been doing this for over a decade, so I know it by heart. Don't ask me to recite it. Um, but as I go over this checklist, if there's anything when I'm filling out the appropriate paperwork that I've missed, I will come back to the vehicle and, and double check. Um, it's a standard checklist for all our vehicles. You get to know it by heart as you do it enough. Some of the things we're looking at is the bottom of the radiator here. Make sure we don't have any coolant leaking out from a possible impact. You know, again, here's one of these little scuff marks we were talking about. We're not going to decline this vehicle for CPO for that. And again, our detail department will clean that up real well. Boost hose are all intact. I don't have any oil leaking out of them. Some coolant hoses right here. They look to be installed and routed correctly. The AC lines don't show any dye. Another boost hose here, secure with its clips. Two different styles, but everything's tight. Looking at the transmission itself and at the pan, don't see any fluid leaking down. Here's the drain plug, it's installed properly, no leaks. Here's our transverse mount or dog bone as it's known. Bushings look good, don't see any irregular tears in it. While we're on bushings here, let's check our lower control arms. Just doing a visual inspection on them. If this was a higher mile vehicle, excuse me, a higher mileage vehicle, I tend to put a pry bar in here and give them a good pry, but driving this vehicle and the low mileage and the quality of our brand, I can tell you out on the road that there's no problems in the steering or suspension. Checking all our boots here, tie rod end boots look good. We shook it down at chest level so I know there's no play in any of these components. The sway bar end links, the boots look good. Constant velocity joint, you can go ahead and spin it around. And another thing while you're under here spinning these wheels, 
again it's something you'll feel out on the road while driving but give it a spin and check the inside of that rim make sure there's not a flat spot there that's something that can take away from the overall feel of the vehicle and also would not be something that the warranty would apply to that would be an outside influence <laughs> same thing over here checking all these bushings checking these boots everything feels good you've got hydraulic and electrical lines here everybody's routed correctly installed in all their clips no damage looking at the brake lines on the caliper there's no fluid leaking out looking up the body of the strut here you can see if there's any fluid leaking down the cartridge no leaks again the lines are routed properly nothing's interfering everything's shaping up to be real good here so while we're up front and checking out tires we want to take a look at the tread and the tires themselves we're gonna make sure we don't have any major damage to the tread and while we're spinning the inside taking a look at that inner sidewall making sure there's no bubbles and the same thing with the outer sidewall want to make sure there's no bubbles one of the services we provide with our certified pre-owns is we deflate and inflate all our tires with nitrogen so we'll go back around after we make sure there's no punctures or damage to the tires and we'll perform a nitrogen service to this vehicle and set the pressures to the door sticker on the driver's door and make sure that it's inflated properly looks good looking good so we'll start moving down the back of the car here I'd like to have a good look here in the back of the turbo we have coolant and oil going to the turbo so we want to make sure that we don't have any leaks there there's heat shields on those lines for those fluids and also for the heater core making sure everything's intact it's in its mount O2 lines routed start looking at these body shields make sure they're not loose no impact damage on them another area here is your rocker panel and jacking rail if you had a small road debris impact here as long as it didn't change this body line it wouldn't be a problem sometimes you see with these cars you have excessive amounts of cosmoline coming back off of them nothing to worry about it's just corrosion protection I know you guys up north really appreciate the corrosion protection These little access panels here are in place sometimes you'll find those missing have a electromagnetic steering on these vehicles so no hydraulic lines going to them that would be something we want to check on a base model with a two liter naturally aspirated engine that still has power steering but everybody looks good our rack bellows are intact it's going to move on to the back of the vehicle following along the exhaust and heat shields are all in place everything's intact newer cars have this arrow underneath to help improve the gas mileage another area you want to check make sure it's not loose no damage start looking at the rear suspension components same thing now here's our parking brake cables installed correctly routed correctly no damage bushings up in the rear trailing arms look good not every vehicle has a fuel filter but the external fuel filter you want to make sure it's mounted properly it's definitely a big safety concern dealing with gasoline everything feels good there checking our brake lines sway bars nice and firm control arm bushings look good no cracks or splits no damage out back we have our rear dampeners here or shocks and same thing I'm gonna check make sure we don't have fluid leaks looking all the way up them looks good the bump stops are in place rear calipers want to make sure our hydraulic lines are routed correctly ABS sensor lines are routed correctly everybody's where they're supposed to be no fluids looking good same thing here while we're out back we're gonna spin this wheel make sure there's no flat spots or bends in the wheel looks 
good. We're gonna do a visual inspection on our tire treads while we're here. If you're out here doing a CPO and you find a tire that's been repaired properly or perhaps repaired improperly, that's something that you don't want to have on a CPO vehicle. The customer's buying a new tire. And here we are. Here's why we do these tread inspections. If you look right here, we've got an object. Got a nice close-up of it. Yeah. That looks like a nail. A little nail or screw. So every now and then you get lucky and it's only in the tread and not all the way through the tire. So I'm give it a little spray with some soapy water up. Oh, I see some bubbles coming out already. So that's through this tire. So we're not going to repair this tire and put it on the vehicle. Unfortunately, low mileage, great looking tire, but we're going to have to replace that for the customer so that they don't experience any problems with it. I'm going to go ahead and mark it real quick. The bubbles are letting you know. Bubbles are letting me know that there's air escaping that tire. And you okay. can see they're just building up. So it did penetrate through. Absolutely. Okay. That'd be a problem later down the road. Absolutely. If, if we have a procedure to repair tires properly for customers, but if you're buying a, mm -hmm. a new car, you don't want to have a repaired tire on it. So uh, although the vehicle is not new, it's going to have a certified pre-owned warranty. And it's just not a practice that we like to do is repair tires for a vehicle. Of course, if it's your vehicle and your tire has a puncture in it, we'd be happy to repair it properly for you. All right, looking good. All our wheel liners are in place. All our arrows and sound baffles are in place. Again, no damage to the underbody here. Things routed correctly. Like to stand from the back of the car and just do a look down the body line. Good lighting lets you see any dings in the side or dents. Like I said, shaping up to be a real nice CPO. Formed our visual inspection. Put hands on components that need to be checked. Checked all our tires. I'm going to get this drain plug installed. One of the things I like to do is clean it as we're tightening it. These newer pans allow for that oil to start running out, which as far as I'm concerned was done. So that way you know if there's a problem with the drain plug. I'm just gonna pre-tighten it down with this little ratchet. It allows me to not over torque it. And we'll get a torque wrench out. Double check our torque spec. 23 newton meters on these new pans. Clear the way here. It's best just to walk to it so you don't overdo it. Don't want to have to buy an oil pan for the vehicle to be right. Should I say don't want it to come out of your paycheck. <laughs> Clean it up. Actually, just give it one more clean. Another thing we like to do here is use torque seal. Just indicates that we are the last people to touch it. If anyone takes that drain plug out, that'll pop right off of there. Do We're supposed yep. to do it on every vehicle. Again, that belly pan was damaged, so I'm going to note that on my repair order and get that replaced for this vehicle to be ready to go. At this point, Chad, looks like we need a tire, a belly pan, and everything's looking good. We'll sit down in a nice clean space and fill out that checklist. Again, with the car here on the lift, if there's anything we've missed on that checklist, we'll come back out here and take a look at it. So, like I said, looks like a pretty good car. Now, what is that right there? Is that your oil filter? This is the housing for the oil filter. Okay. This is what's known as a cartridge style. Older cars came with a canister. Our new 1.4 
TSI engine actually still has a canister style filter. Mm -hmm. A lot of manufacturers have gone to cartridges, double check our O-rings, put a little bit of engine oil on them, put them down, start them by hand. This guy's got the torque spec printed right on it. Let's cut this up. We're going to give a shout out today to any uh, tool brand. <laughs> sponsored by Snapple. Sponsored by Craftsman. <laughs> nice little thing here is can't put clean oil through a dirty hole, so we mm -hmm. can make sure we don't have any excessive dirt or debris sitting there before we start putting engine oil back in the engine. Same thing with our cap. Make sure our seal's nice and clean, no excessive dirt. Oh, cut that one out. And this tells you on here how much? Not on this one. Oh, okay. It's broken. <laughs> I'm actually counting it out as we Oh, so you know. Okay. Another little thing we like to do is this cap can go on in four different ways. We like to make sure it's installed. Four different ways? Correct. Right. It's not indexed to the uh, housing, so it can be installed. Hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Again, it's just the little details. You wouldn't want to open your engine and everything's reading towards you and it's reading away from you. So that's how they come from the factory. That's the way we like to do them. So now we'll check our engine oil level. It's gonna be a little overfilled because we haven't started the engine and filled this housing with oil yet. Clean our dipstick real nice. And it is overfilled, so we will start the car up and reconfirm the engine oil level. Markers are good, headlights are on. Markers are good, we need to check our high beams and our fog lights. Got high beams on, both passenger and driver. You should shut off with our fog lights, and they do. Fog lights, flash to pass feature. Fog lights are supposed to shut off in this country. Daytime running lights look good. Right, we started our engine, we let it run for about 10 seconds and shut it off and let it sit for just a few minutes and pull it out. And that oil level is pretty close to the top of the top cross hatch there and this thing's not up to full operating temperature so we're going to call that good. We're in between our marks at the upper level. A couple other things we'll do here, we'll check the air filter. We'll go ahead and pull out the cabin filter, make sure there's no debris in there. Um, didn't experience any unpleasant odors while driving the vehicle and operating the AC. And like I said, outside of a, a tire, a set of wipers, and a belly pan, looks like a really good CPO. Check the window glass for no chips, and wiper arms, and operation side mirrors, appearance, antenna. Did our uh, visual inspection as we did our walk around. Now that we got it in the shop, got some lighting in here. It's different than the uh, external light. 
a kind of a cloudy day, so taking a look at window glass, paint finish. Um, you can never look at the car too much, you know. We checked our lights here a moment ago, checked all our brake lights, checked our door lock and unlock features with the remote. We checked all the interior and exterior handles. We know our toolkits there. Got to put some air in our spare tire. Checked our panic button. Upholstery of the car looked really clean, low mileage vehicle. Checked all our seat belts. Didn't have any warning lights on in the dash. We will scan the vehicle and make sure there's no faults in the system that need to be addressed. And, you know, body systems, transmission, brakes, airbag. All right, so one of the things we want to check, 12 volt outlets, they get overlooked from time to time. Got this little LED indicator here. Lights up red. Reinstall the cover so no debris or pennies fall in there. Come around to the rear of the vehicle. Check our rear outlet real fast. We got power there, looks good. Some of our vehicles are equipped with a 12 volt in the trunk, so we'll check that real fast as well. Let's see. And no 12 volt outlet, so that's a wrap there. That's one of the little things man gets overlooked all the time, you know. So you go to plug in your iPhone and no power. Not a nice way to experience your new car. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna start getting our estimates together with our repair order. Um, just doing another double check of the checklist here. I don't have my dirty gloves on. Making sure I didn't miss anything before we take the car off the lift. We know we need a splash shield. We know we need a tire. We know we need a set of wipers. Still need to add nitrogen to these vehicles. We perform a courtesy four wheel alignment check and an alignment if the car is out of specifications on all these vehicles as they come in. Um, at that point, we'll take it for another test drive, make sure everything's smooth, the new tire we mounted up is good, want to make sure the wipers we put on are working. Then we'll go ahead and get ready to deliver it to the detail department so it can be prepared for the customer and for frontline presentation.